Next is money. Very fascinating subject, and I always ask myself, where does the money come from? And so I did a bit of digging, and I discovered that in 1913, in the United States of America, this thing called the Federal Reserve Bank was created. Now, a lot of people think that the US dollar is actually printed by the US government. But it's not printed by the US government. It's pr printed by the Federal Reserve Bank. The Federal Reserve Bank is a conglomerate, it's a cartel of private banks that make the dollar. But then, the dollar was linked to the gold standard. Then what happened in 1971, President Nixon decided to take the US dollar off of the gold standard. So now, the Federal Reserve have the ability to print money, money at random. So when you go to a bank, for example, to ask for a mortgage, you go into the bank, you say, I want £200,000 mortgage to buy a house, please. The money is actually generated by your signature. They don't have £200,000 worth of gold sitting in the vault. Because that, the currency, the pound and the dollar, is what's called is a fiat currency. And here's the definition, according to Wikipedia, of a fiat currency. So as long as the government recognise that the £10 note is a £10 note, you try and take an Italian, take 10,000 lira, I lived in Italy during the time of the lira, you take 10,000 lira into a store in Italy now to buy something, they won't accept it. So it's worth the paper that was printed on. So if you look into the history of money, you'll discover that money is just a bit of paper, and it's just worth the paper that it's on. What really counts is the gold and silver. And now this is the really, really interesting part of it. If we look at the value of an ounce of silver over 2,000 years, in ancient Rome, which is what that guy is, you see the way that guy's dressed? In ancient Rome, you could walk into a store with one ounce gold coin and you'd suit yourself up in a business suit, the equivalent business suit of the day. Today, one ounce of gold is equivalent to $1,210, which is about 771 pounds. You can walk into a store and kit yourself out with shoes, belt, tie, everything that you need to dress yourself ready for business. So what have we noticed? We've noticed that over 2,000 years, the value, the real value of an ounce of gold has actually not changed. It's not changed. But what's happened to the value of the pound, the value of the dollar, over time? It's gone down in value. And that's because they keep printing money. Now, you imagine uh, playing Monopoly. And you know that Monopoly has a certain amount of money in each box. And you start playing Monopoly with your friends. And so the value of the properties on the board is worth so much. Then suddenly another friend comes along and says, oh, I've got more money here in another box of Monopoly. Let's throw that in. As soon as that other money comes into the game, what's going to happen to all the value of the properties now that everybody's got more money in their pockets? It's going to go up. And that's exactly what inflation is. But it's piloted by these people from the Federal Reserve. It's not the government. It's these private individuals. So look into it. I'm not saying take this information that I'm giving you as truth, okay? Take it as inspiration to go and find out more about it and think carefully about what really is going on in the world and not what BBC TV or CNN or ESPN or whoever news channel you watch is telling you. So, next thing. There's a lot of the media, when they talk about people with money, they talk about them in a bad way. And I find this, I mean, they're only talking about 2 to 3% of the rich people on earth. The 97%, and I work with a lot of these people because I sell them private jets. And I can tell you, they're really nice people. Very few of them are annoying. Most of them are really nice people. So this whole concept of, of rich people being evil is actually not true. Because most rich people are very nice people. So let's bear that one in mind. But the media don't tell you that story, do they? They always tell you that they've got ten wives... And there was a book in, in the States a few years ago called The Millionaire Next Door. And this guy went out and he interviewed all these millionaires. And he discovered that most of them have been married to the same woman all their lives, or the same man all their lives. They had a, they had a nice family. And they, they drove nice cars. But, again, they were nice people in general. So this whole concept, again, of rich people being... I mean, we only read about a few of them in the press. Most of them like to hide their wealth. And I think that's the best way to do it. Prosperity. Now, this is an interesting one. Because the word prosperity comes from Latin. And this is the way I like to look at it. It means to be in the flow. So when people say to me, I want to become rich or wealthy, I say what we, need to sh we should be aspiring to is prosperity. Because if you're prosperous, you're healthy, you're happy, and you're wealthy. You've got all three. What you don't want to be is you don't want to have a lot of money and then suddenly be unhealthy and then die of cancer or some other thing or whatever or end up having four divorces and being really unhappy. You see a lot of these people in the news, they show, think of Elvis Presley, he was one of the greatest singers 
that's ever been on earth. And, and look what happened to him. Look at also recent people, uh, Whitney Houston uh, and other famous singers that decided to take their lives. It's very sad that this happens. Now these people had a lot of notoriety, they were famous, they had a lot of money, but they weren't prosperous. So prosperity is what we need to be aiming for, so that we are in the flow. Oh, come on and be.